All right, everybody, welcome to a somber edition of Daily Gooner Pod. Uh, we're dealing with uh, the Man City postmortems, the disappointment, uh, kind of the strange world of so many expecting no result and then being ultimately disappointed when, again, we got no result, but by a far less or a far more kind, I guess, margin than we expected. Uh, as usual, uh, I am Raphael. Joining you from the United States, joining me from the UK, kind of around my contingent, my regular, my co-host, Ryan. Uh, welcome, Ryan. Hello, sir. Hope you're doing well. I am well. I sur survived that crazy cold that we had in Texas here that last week. Uh, also joining us here uh, is Sam. Welcome back, Sam. Hello, mate. Good to be here as always. All right. And, and plucked from our Patreon ranks, we're very happy to have uh, guesting with us this week, Jason, Jacob Weeks. Jacob, good to have you in the fourth chair. Good to have the fourth chair filled. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, all right. Well, let's get let's get to it. Again, uh, a lot of trepidation entering the match on Sunday, uh, coming off a one-one draw against Benfica in the first leg of Champions League. It looked like uh, Mikel Arteta was saving some of his stronger players for the weekend, and that was the case. Nicola Pepe got to start after not featuring during the week. Um, Obviously, Thomas Partey was not available, but Kieran Tierney was. So there was some reason for optimism. Although going in, gentlemen, there was a, a, a lot of pessimism. Um, Sam, Pep Guardiola had some very kind things to say about his former assistant. And it seemed it was kind of upsetting to me, disappointing to me that so many of our fans took that as, as, as a backhanded compliment, that he was buttering him up. I kept reading all over. Well, now we're going to lose 5-1. We're going to lose 6-0. They're going to batter us. You know, he's, it's false praise. And it turned out to be really his assessment of, was on the level. Yeah. Um, we've, with Pep Guardiola, whenever he comes up against Arteta, he, if you look back through the interviews, he's always full of praise for Arteta because he's saying that he can always see what Arteta is trying to implement. He's also said about the players that he needs, needs to get rid of and to build the identity in. To a certain extent, that we can see this now. So if one of the most renowned football managers in world football is saying, your manager is a good, good manager, you need to back him, then I don't understand where these fans that want Arteta out are are coming from or where fans actually turn around and say it's a backhanded compliment. This is a guy that's worked with Arteta, seen firsthand what he can do. And you've got to think as well, the majority of Man City's tactics against teams come from Arteta and his analysis of said teams. So he's he's seen it firsthand. Obviously, he know, knows that Arteta's got some weaknesses and Obviously, this is his first job. I think that's what irks most people, that it's his first job. But other than that, I don't see where, where people are coming from in terms of Arteta out or backhanded compliments. But that's just me. All right, Jacob, we're going to bring you in. Uh, again, you, you probably heard it. You probably read it. You, I'm sure you really felt it. But it, it, it was doubly perplexing from going from, oh, they're going to kill us. They're going to run us off the pitch. And then a, a one one nil result. Um, you know, I mean, City was the better team. We can see they're too deep. Arsenal is barely one deep. But it seemed that 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 result, which was much closer to previous results, certainly under Arteta and certainly under Emery or or, or Wenger, seemed to have so many people thinking that this was a false false result. That Arsenal should have been the one nil winner or even more. Yeah, I. they definitely deserve to win. We had chances. Um, but I think in terms of regarding people saying before the game, we're going to get killed, we're going to get demolished. And then it's almost like the game itself changes their mind. They can see that we, you know, scoreline was close and they can see we had some chances, particularly down that um, left-hand side, um, opening up the space and possibly could have got one at some point. But... I, I think it's also the way we're conceding goals at the moment, which, you know, makes people think it's a missed opportunity, even if on the whole City was still the dominant side and we couldn't really, you know, lay much of a finger on them. And I'm sure they had another gear to turn on if they really wanted to as well. 
but, but let's, let's talk about that expectation because I think a lot of us, you know, Arsenal did grow into that first half. Ryan, I'm going to bring you in here because you have some, some stills to, to uh, demonstrate. But, you know, I think everybody was so disappointed uh, uh, that they scored so quickly, although this is not the first time it happened. You remember last year when they came to the Emirates, you know, w when Emery was still our, our manager early in the season where we had an opportunity with, with Martinelli at one side and then City were able to kind of contain that, turned it around, went down the other side and, and, and De Bruyne scored almost as quickly. And it seemed to happen again. And I think people were having Villa flashbacks of conceding in the first minute or two there. But then once it didn't get worse, um, it was frustrating. But, but you, you have a, a frustrating take on it. You, you seem to think, looking at it again, that Arsenal could, really could have done better. Absolutely. And I think the first 10, 15, 20 minutes were all about genuine tiredness from Thursday night. I think you could tell Tierney hadn't been back for a while. You can tell he was a bit rusty because he, he looked shattered after the 25th minute. And you could tell he wasn't his, his, at his best. And you could, you could sense that when Cancelo and Mares are literally doubling, doubling up on him on that side. But... I think we could have got something from this game. And I wasn't, I didn't go into the game with any expectations. I didn't think we was going to get bad. I just didn't have anything about the game. I was like, it is what it is. Whatever happens, happens. We take it as it comes. This isn't the important game of this two weeks. But we looked tired in the first 20 minutes. And then as soon as we started getting our attacking players on the ball, Saka come, coming inside to get the ball, Odegaard getting on the ball, we looked better. We looked like we went genuinely toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester City after after they scored I didn't feel obviously feel a bit worried that they bought the players they have on the counter-attack but I thought I'm not worried a lot here and I think I said this to Sam during the game I was like we, we can win this we, we, we're playing better than them and I think if we had our full 11 I think it could have been a different story I think if we had Partey in midfield and if we had Gabriel at centre back and potentially David Luiz, we I think the game would have been a lot different. And the, I'm going to screen share their first goal right now, which you can tell Tierney isn't back to his his best. Because if you look at Kieran there, he's square on with Marius. His shoulders are square. What he needs to do, and I'm not telling Kieran Tierney how to defend, obviously, but he needs to take him off the line. Mares is obviously going to cut inside on his left foot. Mares is good going either way, but if you take Mares down the wing and make him cross in from there, there's more chance Mari and Holden and Bellerin get the ball away quicker. But also, Saka needs to come back a lot quicker than he has. And close this space here. If he can see Tierney struggling, which we all saw straight away. We saw Tierney, the ball went over his head twice in the first 60 seconds. Saka needs to drop back quicker and double up on Mahrez straight away so he can't cross with his left foot. Because if Mahrez goes up the wing on his right foot, his cross is not going to be as accurate as it is with his left foot. So that goal was so easily avoidable. But again, as Tierney's not been back, Saka is probably knackered from first playing 90 minutes on Thursday night. It's to be expected that they did start fast-paced, fast, as we wanted them to. Goal completely unavoidable. Uh, completely avoidable, sorry. And the next one, which frustrated the hell out of me, I swear I nearly wanted to jump through the screen and grab him by the throat. Hector Bellerin, right... I, I love Hector to pieces, but these. So this is the goal. Uh, well, we had a chance here. Pepe's played the ball into Bellerin. Yeah, as you can see. Bellerin is going to get to the ball first, hopefully. If, if, if you were to, I'm going to interrupt. If you were to post that on social media and say, this is a build-up 
what's the end result going to be? How many people would say either Bellerin puts it in the top left or Bellerin makes, you know, the keeper make a sprawling save? You know, I, I don't think people are going to anticipate what actually happened. What actually happened here? What actually happened was Gundogan got to the ball first, which I don't know, know how. Because... Uh, we've all said it before, Bellerin seriously lacks awareness on the football pitch. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because he's slightly worried about his injury, but this chance here, he could have either put it there, or if he had the awareness of the player that we know he, know he can be, he could have played it to Aubameyang, who's got a tap in. And that was one of the only chances we got in the game where we were pretty much on their goal. And all it took was Bellerin to be more decisive in a split second, and we could have, we probably could have had a goal there. And that is the fine margins in these big games that, and, that we're not taking. And, and Jacob, we're going to bring you back in, and, and I'll ask them a similar question. That was one thing that frustrated me. It seemed like half of half a dozen of one, half a dozen of the other. As you said, players that were coming in tired, but players who were coming in rusty. Pepe was not sharp on his touch. He had a couple of moments where he got the ball. It seemed like they couldn't connect with each other. Um, obviously, Tierney, Tierney was just struggling to get through 90 minutes. He finished 90 minutes. Um, but the passing was not crisp. And it's, you know, in, in a match like this, you, you really need to be playing at your upper margin, Jacob. And, and I, I didn't see it. I don't know what, what you, how you felt about it. No, there was definitely a bit of sloppiness um, in several aspects of the play. Um, you know, uh, Tierney's crosses at times were a bit wild. Um, I think somewhere around the 35th, 40th minute after he surged forward and, you know, got into good space, he then couldn't get back. He was stood with hands on hips. So he was clearly absolutely knackered already before half time. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's where you know, squad depth comes into it. You take a couple of players out of the City team, you put a couple in, do you really notice it as much? Whereas we're talking, we lose, you know, two players and it's almost a completely different team in terms of quality. Um, so everyone bangs on about, you know, we need to rest this player and squad rotate and all that. But when we do, you know, nothing really happens with the players we bring in, unfortunately. Uh Sam, I'm going to uh, kind of a slightly different angle for that. But, uh, you know, it seems you're going to take it as a glass half empty. This has happened over mm -hmm. again. They give up early goals. They're not quite tight. But I, I think a Jape put his finger on it. Part of that is lack of squad depth. With We see when we just take Tierney out, how that affects the squad. Or if you take Partey out, that really affects the squad. You take both of those guys out. They're kind of a core of about half a dozen players that really are needed to go forward. I mean, one thing that got my attention was, was the self-criticism. You know, people like Nico Pepe saying after the match, we needed to be tighter. We needed to be stronger. To me, that spoke of frustration, but it also told me that there's, there's a buy-in. You know, we were, we were questioning Pepe about a month ago, and it does seem that the pieces aren't fitting there, but part of it is circumstance that I, maybe I've just got my, my rose-colored glasses on, but it does seem that there is an opportunity for them to get tighter as they want to be. Yeah, there is. And I think that that also comes with a bit, a bit of an overhaul of the squad. Um, in terms of Pepe, there is a buy-in there. The player wants, wants to succeed here. It's just a case of it's taken him a little bit longer to, to adapt to English football than what some people would have liked. Um, Unfortunately, he's got Hector Bellerin behind him that literally refuses to pass forward to him and kills his career out on the wing. So, um, in that aspect, he's he's isolated in in there. But in terms of of the buying of the players that are still remaining here, that speaks volumes of what Arteta done in the in the last window to weed out the people that didn't buy in, and in the summer to get rid of the bad eggs. So, we've got people that are here want to be here and want to really succeed at the club. It's just whether or not their ability can match, um, I'd actually say their ability and uh, desire can actually cash in what 
what their mouths talk, really. All right. Um, you, you mentioned a critical name this week. Uh, Jacob, I'm going to bring you back because rumors come out uh, yesterday, in fact, that, that Hector Bellerin is considering uh, leaving at the end of the season. These are rumors that came up last summer, but uh, he, he was linked with Barcelona, a, a move back there where he was an academy player, uh, linked to PSG. The PSG rumor has, seems to have bubbled back up. Um, seems the player is keen. We think the, the club might be keen. Um, just, just taking the temperature in my kind of Arsenal community, uh, I think a lot of fans are receptive to that idea. What, what's, your, what's your take on that? Yeah, I'm definitely, you know, open to it if we can get a good deal and find a suitable replacement. I'm certainly not against it, which, you know, a few years ago when he was always linked every year with he's going back to Barca, you know, but they're going to have him back. We're just training him up. You know, I was dead against it a few years ago, but unfortunately, as things have progressed, whether or not that's down to his injuries or what, you know, we're just moving on style of play. He's not particularly linked up well with anyone on the right-hand side for a while now. You see what the combination is on the left, and we're not getting that on the right. Um, and he just seems to have lost his edge a bit, particularly with, you know, recovery speed. So, yeah, I think I would definitely open to moving him on if we can find the right replacement. All right. Well, Brian, we're going to bring you in and kind of, kind of kick some possible replacements around. If Hector were to leave, um, I know you've been toying with some names that, that would intrigue you as replacements, some, some from England and some, some from, from Europe. Yeah, if you remember rightly, I uh, tweeted last summer, which got your, your, your attention quite quickly. I tweeted about Max Aarons. I actually heard Arsenal were hot on his case last summer if Bellerin was to leave. And then today, James Bench said that Lamptey and Aarons are the two possible people that um, Arsenal are looking at to replace Hector, Beller, Hector Bellerin if he does leave. Obviously, both of them would be uh, an upgrade on, on Hector. But I'm also flirting with the idea of Hakimi from Inter Milan. David Ornstein put the idea in my head a few weeks ago when I think it was on deadline day in January. They said Hakimi's looking to leave Inter. Inter can't afford to keep him. They can't afford to pay the instalments or something on it on the deal that they agreed. So looking to sell him on. 35 million, 40 million, I think he'd be absolutely worth it. Questionable defensively, obviously most attacking right backs are. But you can kind of deal with it if you've got Thomas Partey in midfield with a central defensive midfielder. So if you had flown with the idea of Basuma in there with Partey, you have the people that can cover the ground quickly. So the recovery for the right back or the left back won't be as bad. Because you have Partey covering the ground for you, you're, you're golden, really. And Hakimi has the pace to get back. And I, f I, I think he, he would be my my first choice after watching him at Dortmund, ripping it up with Sancho. All right. Uh, well, Sam, we're going to let you have, have your, your shot at that. You and, and Ryan have been kicking about names on your, on your At The Bar. And if those of you who are not watching At The Bar, you know, get to YouTube, get to our channel and check those out. Now, they've, they've been really kind of spot on with their predictions or... or naming names that then come out in the rumor mill uh, later on. But, you know, we've been talking for weeks or months actually about uh, the problems on that, right? That Jacob mentioned how it's Hector and, and Pepe really kind of play the same game. They both want to go inside. There's not a, no, a lot of overlap. There's not a lot of cohesion. What, which names, who do you see of that short list who, who might be able to, to cohere with Saka and Pepe on the right and give us a right side that that has the complement, the complementary play, and the attack that we've been seeing consistently from the left. Um, personally, in terms of combination play, I think Hakimi is the the first choice in that because he's ultimately the superior superior in terms of going forward. So, um, in terms of combination play, that that would be. Him in the number one slot. Max Aaron's is very good at it, but he's more of a traditional fullback. He'll get forward when he needs to and play on the outside, which in turn can allow Pepe to get 
get inside. Um, but I think if Hakimi is is available, he is the one that we go for because he can go inside, he can go outside, he's comfortable on the ball, he's got a good delivery on him, he's got a good keen eye for a pass as well. And he would be comfortable in terms of coming into midfield and holding a spot to basically make a third midfielder. Um, so for me, it's, it is him. But in terms of right back, I've just got a feeling it'll be someone completely left field that we'll go for. <laughs> All right, Jacob, we're, we're a little short on time, but we, we don't want to give Thursday's match short shrift. Very, very important match coming up. They're, they're, they're going to Greece. Uh, the, the second leg against Benfica, both teams uh, 1-1. Arsenal did get a away goal, so that gives them a bit of an advantage when the match starts. Um, are you looking for much turnover? Uh, how confident are you in them, you know, advancing to the next round? This looks like it, it's kind of set up. I mean, we, obviously we'd like them to be up 2-1, but 1-1 is not the worst position to be in. No, I'm pretty confident. Despite the scoreline, we were the superior team. We... We absolutely battered them, really. And it was an unfortunate penalty we conceded. And, you know, how often would you back Aubameyang to score some of the chances he had? Um, so, yeah, going into the next leg, I'm very confident. I think over two legs, the superior quality will show. All right. So so you're predicting a win. I, I'm going to predict a win. Gentlemen, we got like three minutes. Ryan, do uh, you want to throw a possible score out there? What what pops to your head? Snap decision. Uh, four one Arsenal. Okay, Sam. Three nil. It's a confident Arsenal. score. Yes. Three nil. Three nil. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Jacob, you you get the final you get the final score line. What's what 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 number pops into your head? Uh, I'm gonna go three one. I think we've always do a sloppy moment, but I think we will take chances this time. All right, all right. So we're in the injury time, as it were, here on on uh, Daily Gunner Pod uh, over the last couple of minutes. But uh, you know, we, we want to again mention our our Patreon and our YouTube channel. We have Daily uh, Gunner Pod YouTube channel. Um, these gentlemen have been posting the at the bars there, and uh, we want to give uh, uh, Jacob, who's one of our earliest patrons, uh, a chance to to talk about his our value and his value uh, that he's getting from from the site and from these guys. And again, he's got a seat. You, you know, sign up for Patreon and you can, you can be the next Jacob. Is it? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. It's a, you know, a great thing to be a part of the um, discord chat, you know, get even more information than you see on Twitter or sometimes in some of the pods and, you know, get the chat about it and just, you know, put questions across and all that. So get, you know, great info there and everything. Uh, you know, some of the content I've watched a couple at the bars. It's always uh, enjoyable. You know, a bit of a short thing to catch up on as well. And yeah, glad to be part of it. All right. Well, we hope to have you have you back again in that chair again. Our fourth seat is is available for all of you out there. You know, jo- join our community and and you can you can join our our pod community. Um, where else are you going to get that? Uh, all right, so we're we're running the the clock is really running down here. Uh, we got we one 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 final free kick uh, to tee it up, gentlemen. Coming to the next week, obviously Thursday's big. Leicester is massive on the weekend. Um, a final question in the final seconds. Um, Sam Thomas Partey is training with the team that was announced today. Do you expect him Thursday? Do you expect him for Leicester? Should the manager try to push him for both? No. Uh, um... Rather keeping for for Leicester, I think we've got enough to beat Benfica on Thursday. Okay, Ryan, you get the final word this week. What what do you do with Thomas Partey? I'm gonna throw left field and say keep him rested for Spurs. Spurs, wow. Okay, okay, that's still a ways away, but Spurs is Spurs is struggling and be great. It'd be great to uh, again in this troubled season, getting Saint Tottenham's Day, celebrating Saint Tottenham's Day again would be um, one real cherry um, from the 2021 campaign. All right, so we're going to wrap it up here. We want to thank you all out in uh, Podline for joining us. Um, you know, join us on YouTube, you know, follow us on Twitter, um, subscribe to us on Twitter and on YouTube. 
and uh, you know, join our community. You can uh, be, be the next guest in uh, Jacob's seat. So anyway, for, for Sam, for Ryan, and for Jacob, I'm Raphael. We want to bid you a good night. <laughs>